the most of your Walt Disney World vacation. Top 6 Free Things to Do with Kids at Disney World. Hi, I'm Herb Leibacher, and welcome to episode number 131 of the World of Walt podcast, Make the Most of Your Walt Disney World Vacation, for the week of December 3rd, 2017. This is the podcast for Walt Disney World fans, whether you're planning your next trip or just enjoy reliving a little bit of Disney magic. On the last World of Walt podcast, we talked about free things to do at Disney Springs, Today we're going to be talking about the top six free things to do with kids all around Walt Disney World. To help me explore this topic, uh, just like last time, a guy who still likes free stuff, Brian Collins. Brian, yeah. welcome back. And is a big kid himself, I might <laughs> add, so this is perfect for me. You're, you're well equipped for this episode because you like free and you're like a big kid, so yeah, you're, you're the perfect, perfect guest. Right. So, I forgot the warm-up question last time. I think the first time in 130 episodes, I forgot a warm-up question, but we'll, we'll sneak it in this time. So, Brian's A's warm-up question, Marvel or Star Wars? Marvel, are both part of the Disney universe now. Um, both, I'm sure, if they don't have, will certainly have a major presence in the uh, theme parks. Um, certainly in merchandise, <laughs> which is not free. Yes. Um, Boy, you know, I grew up, wow, I grew up with both of them. Actually, growing up as a kid, I was more of a DC guy than a Marvel guy growing up. Um, but Star Wars was the first movie I remember watching. My, my dad took me to, to see the original Star Wars when it first came out. And it's the first time I remember sitting in a dark movie theater, looking up at the screen, going, wow. Um, when that ship, you know, came up over the... Uh, opening scene kind of blew me away so tough choice but I think for nostalgia's sake I'm going to go with Star Wars uh, I think I would have to, to do that as well so I, I really enjoy a lot of the Marvel stuff that Disney's doing now um, I think that just the storytelling the visuals are, are yeah. amazing but now with the new series of Star Wars films coming out, with the new Galaxy's Edge coming out at Hollywood Studios, yeah. I'm kind of excited about Star Wars all over again. Yeah. And when I was in Imagineering, I actually got to uh, play on a real um, Stormtrooper speeder, you know, that they drove through the forests of Endor. Mm. Um, we, we were uh, mocking up the uh, photo opportunity out at the Disney Studios where they have that in to mock it up, I actually got to uh, use a real uh, speeder bike, so that was really cool. Wow, that is cool. Yeah. That was a fun job. Yeah, it was a fun job. Good. Well, today, top six free things to do with kids all over Walt Disney World. Brian, number one for you. Okay, so I'm going to start with one of my uh, favorite free things to do with kids. So, you know, I raised three three kids, two boys and a girl, so, and uh, when they were growing up, we used to call them Epcot's because uh, spent a lot of time out there. Um, so, so free things to do with kids at Disney. One of the favorite uh, free things I used to do was take them to the different movies uh, that they have, free movies at the different Disney resorts. Uh, usually they're outdoors, and um, it's a lot of fun. And, and I think one of my favorite resorts to take the kids to was Fort Wilderness. Um, the, the movies of Fort Wilderness are really fun to watch because in addition to watching the movie, you can buy uh, all the fixings you need to make s'mores and they have campfires going, <coughs> excuse me, they have campfires going and you can actually make s'mores um, while you're watching the uh, movies out there. So that's really fun. I, I think that... The uh, s'mores are not free though. Yeah. <laughs> but the movies are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think that Fort Wilderness is one of the best movie spots, and I think Chip and Dale might make an appearance there, if I remember yep, right. Does that sound right to you? Absolutely, yep, they yeah. do, for sure. Yep. So I, I've definitely seen the movie screen set up at the Polynesian. Um, and I, I'm, I'm Beach sure and Yacht Club. The yeah, the Yacht Club. Uh, yeah. I think Grand Floridian. Uh, a lot of the resorts have them now. Yeah, yeah. Fun way. If you're not going to be spending the day in the parks... Um, yeah. It's kind of a fun way to spend the evening, kind of low-key yeah. chance to yeah. maybe give your feet a rest, too. Yeah, and, and you can find the schedule of what movies will be playing at the different resorts online, um, or I'm sure if you ask any of the cast members at the front desk of the resorts, they can tell you. So. Yeah. Good. All right. Number one, free movies. Can't beat that. Number 
too, back over to me. So another free thing that I really like to do with kids or just without kids um, are watch the fireworks from outside the parks. Oh, yeah. So you, you might think that in order to watch the nighttime spectacular fireworks show, you have to be inside the parks. And certainly if you're inside, you're, you're going to get a special experience. But you don't necessarily have to be inside. No. Especially for Happily Ever After, the fireworks show at the Magic Kingdom. You can sit near the beach, not on, but near the beach at the Polynesian or um, at the Grand Floridian. And there are really yeah. good viewing areas. The music gets piped in. So you really have the full experience. You don't have the crowds. Right. And you don't have to pay for a day of admission. So consider watching the fireworks from outside the parks. Right. At the Contemporary Resort as well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. They actually have a special viewing area for the fireworks set up with some chairs and they uh, pipe in the music. If you go on the level where the uh, shopping is, where all the stores are, and you go outside the big glass stores, um, there's a little area they have set up out there uh, to watch the fireworks. And if I remember correctly, if you dine at the Grand Californian... Uh, California Bob, Grill. California yeah. Grill, sorry. Um, there's a spot there where you can watch, even if you're not dining when the fireworks go on i think you can still show your receipt and get up there to watch right they have outdoor uh balconies yeah. um out there which are spectacular spectacular views um and when i used to I, like i said i started my career at the uh contemporary resort at the front desk before i got into imagineering and i used to sneak up there during my breaks uh just to watch the fireworks yeah. um but spectacular view yep Make sure to check out the fireworks even if you're not in the parks. So is number two. Number three, Brian, back to you. So speaking of, uh, you know, sneaking up there to watch the fireworks, so there are two sets of balconies. There's one facing the Magic Kingdom and another one facing Bay Lake. And I used to also sneak up there because on the other side, in Bay Lake in the Seven Seas Lagoon, they have the electric water pageant that goes... Um, uh, lights up, you know, really cool light show on, on the uh, water out there. And, and um, that's been going on since, I think, Disney opened back in the uh, 70s. Um, really fun. They have music and a lot of, like, animated light. Um, uh, I guess they're, like, um, characters that, that they created on these giant floats out in the middle of, of the water. Um really kind of fun yeah that is a lot of fun sometimes if you're exiting the magic kingdom at just the right time you can see it go by when you're boarding the monorail um, you can definitely check it out from the shores of um, the polynesian as well so yeah. kind of the precursor to the main street electrical parade the yeah the, right uh, electrical water pageants a lot of fun and kind of nostalgic too yeah yeah definitely has kind of like that old school music and stuff yeah yeah yep all right, good. That was number three. Number four, back over to me. So animals are a big part of what happens at Walt Disney World, and the Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge is a great place to go and see animals, even if you're not a guest staying at the lodge. So there are a lot of balconies where you can go out. I think Disney strategically places the food for the animals so that they will come up pretty close to where you can stand so you can see them. Um, and if you happen to be a guest and you're in certain rooms, you can actually look out your balcony and, and see the animals, um, especially in the morning time. These are not the sort of animals you can get close to, uh, but it is still fun to see them. So sometime take a trip out to Animal Kingdom Lodge and check out the animals. Okay. Okay, number so, four, number five is over to you, Brian. Number five, so as long as we're talking animals, let's keep talking animals. Another really fun free thing to do especially again with with kids is out again back at Fort Wilderness they have a petting zoo out there which again I'm not sure if a lot of people know about that but uh, there's a little petting zoo out at Fort Wilderness you can walk around again completely free they've got little goats and chickens and uh, you can actually do a pony ride um, and then right next to the little petting zoo at Fort Wilderness is actually the barn the Tricircle D barn where they house the uh, beautiful, um, I think, they, are they Clydesdale horses? Yeah, or they are. Clydesdales, giant, I believe. Giant Clydesdales that pull the Walt Disney World calliope um, down Main Street and in parades and stuff. Um, gorgeous horses. So you can go in the barn. You can check them out. You can actually see the calliope 
and there's actually um, a couple like uh, plaques and, and some information in there that talks about the history of, of the Disney Calliope um, and, and talks about the horses and all of that. Um, so just a lot of fun to kind of go and, and check out. Yeah, this is a great one. I think a lot of people, like you say, don't know about this petting zoo. Yeah. And the barn next door is a very fun place to to venture in. There are a lot of photographs of Walt yeah. and his long history yeah. with horses. And just seeing the Clydesdales in there, they're just huge, huge massive beautiful. animals. Yeah. Uh, impressive. So uh, fun, to, fun to check out. And actually, most of the, the stalls have the horse's name on them, too. So it's fun to see right. which horse has which name. So right. That's right. fun. Right. Okay, that was number five. Uh, number six, so I think I'm going to combine three or four into one here. So Disney World, as we all know, is a huge place, and you need transportation to get around to all the different spots to see and do things. And fortunately, Disney provides a lot of ways that you can get around, and all of these methods, at least as of right now, and I think for the foreseeable future, they're free. So you do not have to pay to take a ride on the monorail, and in my opinion, that's an attraction unto itself. Um, go take a little tour around the resorts, jump off and jump on, check out the, the gift shops and the, the, um, the uh, restaurants. Uh, there are boats that, that cover a lot of territory around Walt Disney World Resort, especially to and from Disney Springs. Um, there are buses, which may not be quite as magical as a monorail or a boat, but can still be a lot of fun for a kid. Uh, and in the not too distant future, we're gonna have gondolas as well, connecting Hollywood Studios and Epcot so very exciting to see what that's going to look like. Yeah. So take advantage of the free transportation. Um, it's it's like an attraction on its own. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of like the monorails, so um, I'm sh sure people can hear in the background here. We're, we're live out at Disney Springs, and, and they've got some Christmas music going on. So one of the things, uh, and, and if I'm not mistaken, I think uh, this podcast is going to be around the holidays um, hop on the monorail and make sure you go to the Disney resorts around the Magic Kingdom the Grand Floridian Contemporary and the Polynesian because inside every year for the holidays uh, the Disney chefs have a competition to create the biggest coolest gingerbread house and these gingerbread houses are really impressive and spectacular I mean they are like life-size houses we're not talking yeah. tabletop houses they're huge um, in addition the resorts are all decked out for the holidays and have gorgeous Christmas trees and stuff so you know if you if you're here for the holidays definitely worth a monorail trip to check those out yeah good good Christmas time addition so I'm yeah. glad you added that to the list all right, top six free things to do with kids at Walt Disney World. Number two, check out the outdoor, sorry, number one, check out the outdoor movies. Uh, number two, watch the fireworks from outside the parks. Number three, old school, check out the electrical water pageant. Number four, check out the animals at the Animal Kingdom Lodge. And close behind, number five, go to the petting zoo and the Tri-Circle D Ranch. Uh, and number six, check out the transportation systems, the monorails, the boats, the buses, and soon the gondolas. So, Brian, thanks for joining me today. If people are interested in what you're up to, what's the best way for them to get in touch? Well, the best way is uh, go check out my website, which is wdwithme.com. Um, I talk a lot about my background as a former Disney Imagineer on there. Um, if people are interested and want to take a tour of the Magic Kingdom or Epcot with a former Imagineer or have dinner with a former Imagineer, you can sign up on my website to do that as well. Um, you can also follow me on social media. All my social media links are on the website as well. Um, I will put a special plug out there for my Twitter handle. Uh, I love to get people to follow me on Twitter. So my Twitter handle, it used to be WD with me, Brian, but not anymore. Um, I have evolved um, <laughs> for free. You can follow me on Twitter at brainstorm. I-N-S-T, Brainstorm I-N-S-T. That's short for Brainstorm Institute, which is actually the name of my consulting practice. Uh, so follow me on Twitter at Brainstorm I-N-S-T or um, check out my website, wdwithme.com. So as someone who's had the opportunity to tour through the parks with you, I've, I've always learned something new and it's always a lot of fun. So I'd encourage yeah. other people to check that opportunity out as well. Love, love, love doing it. 
So, Brian, thanks for joining me today. Happy Hanukkah and Merry Christmas. Thank you very much, Herb. Today we head out to the music of Happily Ever After, which, as you learned on the podcast, you can watch outside of the Magic Kingdom. And yes, we have made it through the list of the top six free things to do with kids at Disney World, but our conversation doesn't have to be over. I'd like to hear what you think about our list. You can do that by visiting the show notes page at worldofwalt.com slash 131, a page that works great on your tablet, desktop, and smartphone. Leave your comment in the comments section and check out what other people think as well. If you like today's podcast, I would appreciate it if you would spread the word. Tell your family and your friends. And to wrap up for today, as always, a heartfelt thank you to you for spending some of your time with me. I'd also like to thank everyone who visits the worldofwalt.com site, where you can read interesting Disney articles and chat with other folks in the comments sections. By listening here and by visiting the site, you allow me to share the fun of Disney with you. And that is pretty cool. Thank you for being a part of it. So until next time, my friend, may God bless you. So there's a great big beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of every day